Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everyone, so welcome back. So we are now going to discuss about the further extensions of conjunction theory, which means that we were talking about the two period model of conjunction and under that we derived certain aspects and we try to understand uh, the behavior of representative agent under a two period framework. So it, it made us understand that how with the help of uh, micro foundations, we can have some kind of generalization on the the macro theory of consumption. We will be also looking at certain dimensions that we cover. So, for example, in today's session, I will be mostly covering with the uncertainty and also to the life cycle theory of the Friedman. So, Friedman gave the permanent income hypothesis, uh, which, which means that he mentioned about how the individuals when they react about their income. So, whether they are bothered about the constant increase in income or whether it is some kind of transitory, the, the sudden rise in the income. So, those aspects we will be dealing with today. We will be also trying to add the dimension of uncertainty in the macroeconomic concept, especially in the two period context that how when we see a, some kind of uncertainty which is going to arise in future, then how the consumer is going to react. So, there is a term in macro we often use in our analysis is called precautionary saving. What is the meaning of precautionary savings? So, when I say that savings which means that the, uh, some, uh, the individual is facing some kind of uncertainty in future. So, in order to make sure that the, the future consumption remains smooth, there should not be any problem. So, in order to maintain the current level of consumption in future given the uncertainty, this representative consumer goes for saving in the current period. So, as you have further increase in uncertainty, this leads to more of precautionary saving. Precautionary savings are not good for the economy as a macroeconomic variable because individuals compromise on their level of consumption. So, once the individuals are going to com compromise on the level of consumption, then of course, there will be a compromise on the productivity, there will be also compromise on the output. So, precautionary savings are good because people save for the rainy days, but it is also not recommended to have the increase because of the uncertainty. But in a, in a very broad framework, we try to understand the behavior of the representative agent given the uncertainty. So, so far what we have covered is certain comparative statics that we had about the what happens when the current income is going to rise, what happens if the representative consumer is going to see the rise in income in the future period, what happens when the, when the representative consumer is going to see uh, some kind of interest rate increase in future or in the current period. So, the borrowing and lending scenarios will matter if the interest rate is going to be higher. So, then there will be role of substitution income effect and then we we examine that aspect also. Today, in today's session, it will be interesting and we will be seeing further uh, dimensions of the consumption and with this we will conclude and then we will move to the government and we will see that under two period model how government behaves in a more uh, intertemporal framework that whether they have to go for transferring of tax to the current generation or it will be future how they manage. So, uh, so in economics we, we always say that the tax cut is not a free lunch because you have to pay if you are seeing the lower taxes in the current period, then you have to be ready that you have to pay in future. So, in that scenario, how the representative consumer is going to smooth out the consumption in the intertemporal framework. So, we will be trying to understand that. Now, here we will the references. So, references remain same. Uh, so, here we have the Stephen D. Williamson and then Eric Sims. Sanjay K. Chug is also a particular reference in this. 
So, we will be talk, trying to understand that how the representative in agent is going to react with the uncertainty. So, let us start with that setup and we will try and understand in a more comprehensive manner. So, in the last class we were talking about the uncertainty and it was uh, uh, some kind of background. So, we have already discussed that. So, let us get back to the problem statement. So, here what we are saying that uh, the representative consumer is facing uncertainty about the future income not in the current. So, why we are facing future uncertainty, why we are introducing future uncertainty here because we want to see that how this representative consumer is going to adjust with the current level of consumption, how the current income is going to be impacted when this representative consumer is facing uncertainty in future. So, that we are mentioning here. Suppose the future income tax 2 values. So, here we have y t plus 1 h is greater than y l t plus 1 1 and this shows that the, the representative consumer because of this uncertainty he has uh, this level of of the the scenario in future so his future income is going to face this either it could be higher or it could be lower and as far as y is concerned we refer to as income now once i am having the uncertainty then there will be likelihood attached so we attach the probability concept here so here we mention that the let the probability of high income state occurring be p and probability of low income 1 minus p. So, here we are trying to put a particular state variable state scenario in the future income because current income we are not bothered so much because current income does not face any uncertainty. It is just the future income which is facing uncertainty. So, in future uh, income we, are, we will be introducing two scenarios now that what will happen. So, which means that the if I am introducing this that high income state occurring be p and probability of low income 1 minus p then here it will be expected expectation of y t plus 1 is equal to p h. So, I attach that I attach probability p with y s t plus 1 assuming that this representative consumer if he earns this is the probability of, of having high income in future and 1 minus p is the probability of having a low income in future. Now, once I define this then the corresponding y h t plus 1 whatever I am assuming the, the given level of probability I will have to also, uh, also specify the consumption attached with this and the consumption attached with this. So, consumption attached with this is that if he is going to have the high income in future with given level of uncertainty then c h t plus 1 equal to y h t plus 1. So, this is what we have plus he will have the savings. So, in the future in the previous in the current period he has saved some amount. So, this is nothing but s t. So, s t 1 plus r t y t minus c t y t minus c t is equal to s t. So, it can be also written as c h t plus 1 is equal to y h t plus 1 plus 1 plus r t s t and in the same way we can also write it as here as c l t plus 1 is equal to y l t plus 1 plus 1 plus r t and y t minus s t y t minus c t. So, here it is the s t term here it is the the reward that he is going to get on his current period saving which is going to be matured in the future period. So, this will be the extra income of the representative consumer that he will have given the high and low income scenarios uh, that he is going to face in the future period and the corresponding consumption in high and low states are these. So, here we have defined the consumption in the future period and the consumption in the uh, uh, consumption in the future period when the income is high. So, high income state correspond to this low income state correspond to this. So, this is what we assign. So, here we can connect easily. So, y s t plus 1 is coming here, y l t plus 1 is attached with this. So, here now the expected value of consumption that so here we have the expected value of y s y t plus 1 that how much this representative consumer is going to have the future income which is going to be the stochastic term attached with certain probabilities. So, here we are mentioning that expected value of consumption in the second period is going to be the expected c t plus 1 
is equal to p c h t plus 1 plus 1 minus p c l t plus 1. Now, I will be going for expected level of consumption. So, I will have to attach probability with c h t plus 1 and c l t plus 1 also. So, here I am doing the same. So, expectation c t plus 1 is equal to p c h t plus 1 plus 1 minus p c l t plus 1. The, the most important part of this is that we are going to calculate the expected future consumption given the level of probability that this representative consumer is going to face. Now, here you have to note that here we are mentioning about so in the earlier condition we mentioned about the marginal utility of future consumption. So, here the we will try to understand that how uncertainty impacts consumption and this this consumption which is going to impact how it, it is going to be. So, whether the expected marginal utility that I am going to get will, will this be equal to the given level of probability that I am attaching. So, which means that I will have to now deal with this H and L. So, the consumption calculated in H and L. So, marginal utility at these two points whether it will be equal to the overall expected marginal utility those things we are to seeing that if I am saying that the high income state is having this consumption, low income state is having this consumption then there will be a some kind of expected marginal utility of future consumption. So, whether this future consumption is equivalent to these two. So, how we can we can average out. So, average out scenarios are important to understand here. Now, if you look from the Euler condition, so your Euler condition uh, comes out to be this that the marginal probability to consume in the current period or marginal probability of the marginal utility of consumption in the current period is nothing but beta into 1 plus RT. The expectation is attached with this because expectation is dealing with the future consumption, right. So, once I have the expectation about the future consumption, then this is the expectation of marginal utility of future consumption. So, in order to arrive at the the other condition, we will have to calculate this expectation, expected value of future utility of consumption. So, so future uh, marginal utility or marginal utility of future consumption. So, this will be the right term. So, marginal utility of current consumption is equivalent to beta into 1 plus R t the expected marginal utility of future consumption which is not the marginal utility of consumption and which is not the same as marginal utility of consumption uh, calculated at these points these two stated points which is p and 1 minus p attached with these two points uh, point probability which means that the consumer is indifferent about the marginal utility of current consumption given that he if he is able to save this much amount 1 plus rt is which he is going to get. So, the interpretation remains same. The only difference that we see is that here the you have the expectation operator attached with the future the marginal utility of future consumption because we are introducing uncertainty here. So, this is the marginal change that we see with the error equation given the uncertainty that we have set up this. So, future the expected uh, marginal utility of future consumption is going to be the added component here. So, expectation is playing important role. Now, let us walk out. So, suppose we have the following utility function with expected future utility. So, here it appears that here we are having log c. So, log c t plus log expectation of c t plus 1 because this is what we are introducing the. So, we are now going to see in a more simplest form. So, we know that since the uncertainty is attached with the future period, so it is going to be this. So, your lifetime budget constraint of the intertemporal budget constraint of the representative consumer or the lifetime budget constraint of the representative consumer looks like this. So, C t plus expectation of C t plus 1 upon 1 plus R t is equal to Y t plus expectation of Y t plus 1 upon 1 plus R t. We can opt for either constraint or unconstrained optimization. So, here we have max C t u is equal to u C t plus here if I am going by the method of substitution. So, you just have to solve for the, the expectation of C t plus 1. So, here if you just solve then this, this is how you try and get it. You can introduce it here. Go for differentiation d u upon d C t with respect to current consumption. So, this is what we get the first 
order condition since this is the same of C T plus 1. So, I just introduce I just write it instead of the whole expression I just write it as C T plus 1. So, I am arriving it here which is nothing but the marginal utility of current consumption equivalent to same beta multiplied by 1 plus R T the expectation of the marginal utility of future consumption. So, this is the other condition that we get when we are introducing the uncertainty in the future period. So, let us now deal with it how it looks like. So, here what we are trying to see is that the important point to note is that here this particular uh, uh, curve that we have the indifference curve it is bowed in which means that the further subsequent uh, order conditions will play an important role. So, as long as it is greater than 0 the convexity uh, I would say criteria fulfills. So, the more it is inside the, the better is the is the return that we calculate. So, this, this is what we have the uh, risk lower and risk our scenario that we always try to look at. Now, here you can see that here we are trying to see the expected marginal utility of future consumption. So, this is the midpoint. So, if if I am going to see so let us start with the with, since we are not having any uncertainty in the current period. So, we are not considering that here we are only dealing with the future period. So, what is future period? So, in case of future period this is how it looks like. So, here you have the C t plus 1 which is the future period consumption. Here you have the marginal utility of future period consumption because this is where we are struggling because of these two scenarios that we are introducing. So, as long as you have the third order condition. So, third derivative of C t plus 1 is greater than 0 then we can have the expected a marginal utility of future consumption greater than the marginal utility of expected future consumption. So, this is the difference that we have. So, if you think about that at we are introducing two scenarios. So, here we have the high state and here we have the low state. So, high state is C t plus 1 L and here we have the high state. So, if the moment I move from here to here this is what we have the mu hat C t plus 1 and then you have mu hat C t plus 1 L. Now, the expected marginal utility of future consumption this is what we were trying to get here the expected marginal utility of future consumption right for the other condition. Here we are saying that if you can get the, the midpoint of this then this decides about, but the if you the coefficient or or the line connecting this indifference curve which is this, this decides about the marginal utility of expected future consumption. So, here we have the marginal. So, as long as this particular line is bought in, so it is inside having more curvical shape, then if it is greater than 0 which is the it is the minimum criteria satisfying, then the then the gap will be much uh, much larger and then you will have the this condition satisfied. So, as long as you have wide gap from this to this point if it is more deeper inside it is having a bowed in kind of scenario, but the condition is that the minimal condition minimum condition has to be satisfied. So, curvature of the indifference curve plays very important role here. So, this is what we try to achieve. So, our objective for the other condition is to find this we have already defined the low and high. So, if I, I if you can take into account the midpoint of this line then we can easily get this and with this we can also have the expected future consumption. So, this is the ultimate idea uh, ultimate objective of ours that how much this representative consumer given the uncertainty that he or she is facing is having the the expected future consumption and corresponding expected marginal utility of future consumption. So, we will be introducing these two and we will be trying to understand that, but this condition is more to deal with the bowed in scenario. So, which means that if, if for convexity if you have the further the curvature of this will decide about how much is the gap that he is going to see from the expected marginal utility of future consumption and the marginal utility of expected future consumption. So, these two are different things. And so, this is what we try to mention. So, here it is about the curvature and here it is about the expectation which is the averaging of or I would say midpoint of these two. So, curvature of marginal utility does matter. So, here this is what we 
say that expected marginal utility must be greater than the marginal utility evaluated at the expected future consumption. So, this is what we mean to say and this condition should be satisfied. Now, the slope of the line if I try to calculate these two. So, the, so that slope of the line connecting these two extreme points which is nothing but the marginal utility of the consumption with high income and marginal utility of consumption of low income both in the future periods. Uh, here you have this particular uh, the slope will be calculated at this right this minus this. So, the, this is how it looks like. Now, to find the value of the straight line because we do not know at this point what is the value. So, we are just introducing this part. So, expectation of C t plus 1. So, if I am defining at this by some x or some value right. So, this will be equivalent to the C l t plus 1 right upon expectation of C t plus 1 this is what we have minus C t plus 1 right l. So, both are here. Now, once I go for solving this by equating these two then we have the value for the. Uh, so, if I solve for x here then here we have the probability of the probability attached with the marginal utility of the future consumption given high income plus 1 minus p the marginal utility of future consumption given low income is equivalent to what we get is this expected marginal utility of future consumption and this is what we wanted to get. So, we got this point right. So, this is the value that we are getting for this. So, this we have added here. So, two high and low state scenarios evaluated at mean consumption is equal to expected marginal utility and with this we will be satisfying the criteria. Now, what is this? The criteria is that if you want to know about what is the expected marginal utility of future consumption of this representative consumer, then this is how it looks like. So, here you have the marginal utility of current consumption upon the beta. So, the, this is what we discounted by the. So, if R t is going to be higher right. So, you have the marginal utility of consumption going to be lower. If R t is lower then marginal utility of consumption is going to be higher which means that the high interest scenario is leading to individual saving more and and here it is just that this is the equality condition. So, this equality condition says that the marginal utility of, of, of consuming or marginal utility of current consumption is equivalent to what the individual is going to save in the current period. So, this is the same. So, whether the consumer is going to consume more in the current period or he is saving more in the current period both should be equal. So, this is what we try to achieve with this. Now, here we are uh, putting a comparative statics scenario where what we are doing is that what happens when uncertainty increases. Now, if I are saying that once we have the rest of the scenario same, here we have the parallel line moving up when the uncertainty is increasing which is the expected marginal utility of future income future consumption is increasing. So, this is what. So, if it was here and now it is moving towards here which means that this leads to increase in marginal utility of future consumption which means that the individual will be compromising more on the current consumption because current consumption does not face any kind of uncertainty. So, once I say that the future expected marginal utility of future consumption is going to increase it means that this particular individual is going to save more in the current period. So, if you have high uncertainty in future so that is why you have uh, different indicators in the macro economy to measure the sentiments though how uh, how far or how uh, efficiently they measure the sentiment that is a different case. But you have different sentiment indicators and even central bank and different agencies try to collect the sentiment just to know that how individuals are are forming the expectation about future. So, if the individuals are forming the expectation about future not very good very uncertain which means that this is going to immediately impact the consumption pattern and once the consumption goes down the aggregate demand is going to be impacted and once aggregate demand is going to be impacted then it will have a big impact on the macroeconomic outcomes. So, the economic outlook does matter and in that scenario the precautionary saving idea comes into mind. So, if a high uncertainty in future then individuals are going to save more. 
So when we have COVID-19 COVID pandemic, then we saw that individuals, those especially on in the contractual jobs, they lost their job and as a result, we saw that the people uh, started uh, putting uh, some kind of restriction on their consumption, especially the lower income strata. They have gone for, a, 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 I would say, tremendous compromise on the current level of consumption, considering the high uncertainty in future. Whereas the, the rich and affluent class or those who are having the regular income, those who are in a regular job, for them, it does not matter because they are sure that their permanent income is constant or it, it will increase. So at least they are going to have some cash flow on a regular basis. So their consumption uncertainty we are ruling out. You can link it this kind of concept with those people who, are, who, who, who do not have the regular job and who get in, in, income, whose income is dependent upon the, the macroeconomic outlook of the economy, the business cycle. The business cycle is more in favor if, if, if it is upward, uh, up, if, if it is moving upward, which means that it is on the recovery, then they they will get the good job opportunity. If they are not getting good job opportunity, which means that their future income is uncertain. The moment I say a future income uncertain, which is directly linked with the employment, then this representative consumer is going to save more in the current period itself so that he can smooth out the future consumption easily. So that's why government and macro, all, all the agencies, they always try to work out. They try to have the, the balanced uh, macroeconomic outlook. The moment the individuals are st started expecting uh, uncertainty in future, there will be immediate impact on the current consumption. People will start saving money. And once they save, then it will create some kind of extraordinary pressure on the consumption, aggregate demand, the, the economy will further, uh, may further plunder and then it may create very adverse scenario again in future. So this will again add the uncertainty scenario in future. So such type of analysis is important to understand the consumption pattern in the overall economy. So precautionary savings that concept we have understood here. So maybe in your textbook you are reading the precautionary saving the individual say but if you want to understand in a more clear manner with the set of uh, uh, simple mathematical formulations then it helps you understand the concept better so this is all about the the uncertainty that we are going to face in the next period in the next session we are going to talk more about the the uh, the generalized version of the consumption that we have assumed. So what happens if the individuals are going to live for more than two periods? So those dimensions will be covering it. Thank you. Thank you so much.